What's up, Matt from Fab here. In today's video, I'm gonna be stripping down a Ford four-speed rocket gearbox with a Quaife Clubman straight cut gear kit installed in it. Um, I just did a trade for this gearbox with, uh, with another straight cut box that I had uh, because this one is gonna be suited to go behind the Ford Pinto that's going in the old mushy P. So this gearbox actually has the wrong gear ratios in it for third gear. Um, everything else from the top looking in looks good um, but as you'll see later on looking in at the top doesn't show you the whole story so the plan was to just strip this down and change the third gear to the ratio that I wanted. Um, and build it back together but as you'll see as we get into it it needs um, a bit more than just the gear changing so start off by stripping out the uh, selector mechanism and you've got a little roll pin you need to knock out um, which goes into the shaft and then you have to knock that little like core plug thing out from the end of the tail housing remove this bolt on the side which holds the little detent um, which basically helps it to select into either first, third, neutral or second and fourth. Once you've got all that out, that just slides out from the back and then you can remove the selector forks. That's the little detent that sits in there. And this just comes up out of the way and uh, you can remove the selector forks. So you've got a brass one and uh, this has got a steel one for the first and second which is I think is an upgraded part I think they're normally both brass but looking in there you can see everything actually looks really good apart from that reverse gear selector hub which has got huge chunks out of the reverse gear so next you've got to take the tail housing off or actually just slide it out a little bit and then rotate it around to give you access to remove the lay shaft which is uh, this here so you've got your um, your main shaft at the top with your gears which are able to rotate which you select with the selector forks the lay shaft has the fixed gears on it at the bottom and then you've got the, the output shaft which is on the front of the gearbox um, and then once you've got that out, once the lay shaft is out of the way, you can then just slide this whole assembly out. Alright, so I've just made a uh, grim discovery straight away. And that is that the end of the main shaft is pretty much ruined. That's all the material that's worn off of that shaft. So the way this goes together is the lay shaft which is sat in the bottom has to, has to drop down in the casing for you to be able to slide this out. It's down there and that pin that I pulled out just allows all that to drop so that this can come out the back so now this, that's all that the way I can lift this up and out these are the thrust washers that sit either side of the lay shaft and it's clean inside the uh, casing apart from that bolt which I dropped in there earlier. So in each end of this, you've got 20 needle roller bearings, which all fall out, which is what makes assembling this bit and getting it all in quite difficult. Well, 
The one that we need to replace is this one, which is third gear. So the only markings on the teeth are sort of slight, a sort of slight, almost scoring going sideways. I don't know if you can pick that up in the camera. You can kind of feel it a little bit with your nail. So this has oval circuit hot rod racing ratios in it where the second and third gear are almost identical basically for running on long and short tracks so they don't have to change their diff ratio they just either run in second gear or third gear but it's only the third gear that is uh, different to the rally ratios so that would be the one i need to replace if you're interested in a little bit of a demo of how this works so in here you got the uh, synchronizer hub, you've got this little ring that holds, these are like the locating tabs which locate on the, those three grooves in there to basically lock the synchro ring in. So this one's locked directly to the shaft. This is what's connecting the shaft through these teeth in here onto each gear, whichever it is. So to connect the main shaft to that gear, this has to slide out. The synchro ring in the middle slows it down, brings them together and just allows that to go in nicely. If this wasn't there to slow it, and match the speed of the two, you'd have this one whizzing around as that came in and it would just smash all the teeth off. So when these wear, what happens is you, you, you essentially wear this out to the point where it pushes all the way in but doesn't slow it down enough. So when you, when you hear people say the synchros are gone, it's where this is worn out inside. It's just hitting up against the flat of there and it's not, it's not um, slowing it on the tapered edge anymore. So as long as you've got a gap and you push that up tight, as long as there's a gap there, you know that it is working and you can feel, I can lightly press on that and I can't twist it, so. So if this shaft wasn't knackered, this would be as far as I'd have to go. I could have just swapped that gear out, swapped the gear on here, put it back together, and, um, and that would have been it. But that's obviously not the case. I think, you know, I might be able to weld this build this up with weld and then machine it back down. There's a little circlip in there and then that should release all of this There we go. I was hoping that I could have just taken this apart and replaced those two gears, put it back together and had a good straight cut gearbox, but that is not the case and the main culprit is this shaft which you can see the end is just mullered here where the bearing sits options are obviously a new shaft the other option build it up with weld and then machine that back down and just try and get a really good finish on it 
I wouldn't have any issue doing that if this was a sort of a, a pressed fit on bearing but this is actually the surface that the, the needle rollers roll on so it's got to be you know really good or what I think may even be a better solution would be to make a little sleeve um, try and get a really hard something really hard to make the sleeve out of machine this down and then put a sleeve over the top of it so we've got to fix the shaft um, one of the synchros is um, a bit worn so I changed that which is this one which goes on to the fourth gear if you push it on you can see there's there isn't much gap there um, yeah oh, that was the other bit of damage there's a chunk out of reverse gear there this had been um, not assembled right so that the it was like a bit sloppy so you could get it into first gear uh, you could get it into reverse without pushing this down so I've sorted that out but that that might explain why those teeth are missing on there reverse inside the casing looks all right I'm wondering whether someone's run this in a car without a pilot bearing in the uh, in the end of the crank I reckon that's what's happened so if you don't have a pilot bearing in the end of the crank and you're just relying on the center of the clutch centering of the clutch then that clutch plate can move around so this this could be sat not central um, so if this is on the piss you let off the clutch it clamps up tight and it's not it's not directly central to the crank it's essentially rotating around like that and that's why it's ground that away in there I think um, and that's why you need a pilot bearing in your crank you know perhaps the pilot bearing had failed and that was enough of uh, enough movement to not have that straight that would be my uneducated guess so yeah I, I enjoy stuff like this just taking stuff apart and I used to like taking stuff apart when I was a kid but could never actually put it back together but I find as long as you can like look at it and understand how it's actually working makes it easy for it to go back together um, whereas if you're just sort of taking pictures and not really taking the time to figure out what's doing what it can be easy to to reassemble something that's not quite right so to get the first gear off you got to remove the um, main bearing that sits on the end of there that goes into the tail housing case and that was pretty uh, well sort of fixed on there so I ended up just putting a bit of heat on it and then I uh, was able to get that off without too much of an issue and on closer um, inspection I noticed a bit of scoring on the second gear sort of uh, area where the gear runs nothing on the inside of the gear um, so whether that was on there previous to having this gear kit I'm install installed I'm not sure right so I think the best option is going to be to try and find another shaft um, rather than repair this one I'm hoping that there's plenty of these about because this is just the stock shaft um, that you know came in one of these four speed boxes um, obviously that's mullered um, but with that bit of score in there there's nothing, there's nothing on the inside of the second gear, um, so it's not whether that's been like that previously when it was taken apart and this gear kit was fitted, I'm not sure. Um, this is a little bit not that nice. Um, and obviously this reverse gear synchro hub is uh, a bit mullered goes that way doesn't it so if I can find a shaft and one of these might as well do it right I uh, just need one synchro ring put some new bearings in it um, obviously the gears um, and then 
you know, I should have a good box with the right ratios in it. It has turned out to be a bit of a lemon. I probably should have just sold the other box and, um, and a better option probably would have been to just buy a brand new gear kit. They're like, I think it's 1,250 quid for the, for the new gear kit. So if you can find a decent box to start with, donor box, a few bits to rebuild it, you've got something brand new then, and you can pick the ratios you want, obviously. So yeah, wasn't the best deal on my side of it, but you know, that's the problem with getting anything second-hand motorsport related. The stuff generally just takes a beat in and gets not always treated very well. But we'll, uh, we'll get what we need and um, get it sorted. I hope that was interesting. Um, I'll get all the bits gathered up and then next video we'll be putting it all back together. That's it for this one. Cheers for watching. See you on the next one.